Today it's all about the red, white, and blue, so keep watching. Welcome and welcome back. We're going to start with a pizza pan from Dollar Tree, some flat 2x paint, a glue stick, some ribbon, and a calendar page from Dollar Tree's calendars. We're going to start by removing and cleaning up this pan, take off any glue and residue, and we're going to take the oils and dirt off of it by using this alcohol. I've just got 70% and I use it to clean my projects to get them nice and clean. Then I'm going to use this wreath form that fits nicely on the inside to determine the size of my page. So while my pan is drying, I am going to start tracing and trimming up my paper. I did give that one coat on that pan that's outside drying. I'm going to cut just to the outside of this line just to give me a little more area to glue down and make it a little bit larger. Be sure you make it easy on yourself by turning that page while you are cutting. Now here's the pan. This is how it looks just by covering the edges. That's the only part that's going to show. I'm looking now to see where I need to put my glue. And it is a colored glue that dries clear, so it makes it very easy to use and um, know where you're lacking if you don't get enough coverage. So be sure you don't leave any lumps or bumps in there. We want this to be nice and smooth. So I'm just going to lay it there for a moment, get out my ruler, this came from Dollar Tree, and just measure to try to get it as close to center as possible. I'm going to pat that out and rub it out from the center outward. And then if you have any little bubbles that still remain, you can take a little needle poke it in there above that bubble and it will just press right out. It's a good little tip. If there's any little bumps and chips in your paint or places you missed, just go back over with a chalk pen or with a chalk marker or a white marker. A little bit of matte Mod Podge, go over the top, it's going to keep it weatherproof. It's going to keep that paper in place too. So now we're going to look at our ribbons and decide what we want to do. These are thrifted and the white one on top came from my wonderfully generous neighbor. So I'm going to take this ribbon and start to work. In the meantime, I wanted to let you know that this red, white, and blue DIY is an open challenge and it is hosted by Teresa and Sammy. It's a patriotic challenge to help out the Fisher House and I will have their links below in the description box please please go over there and check out their videos okay so i am just measuring out 24 inches of the blue 24 inches of this ruffled white and i thought that this blue and white would be so pretty layered on top of this ruffle ribbon and since it's flat in the center it's going to make it very easy to do i'm just going to make a little squiggly light line of glue down the center so that we can Put this blue and white polka dot ribbon right on top. If you make a long thin line down the center, you may have a little bleed through and it's going to make your ribbon look a little darker. Um, so just do this you know, however you want, but this is what I do and it keeps it from showing and it's a little bit better coverage. You're just going to press that down as you go, working in little sections so that your glue doesn't dry too quickly is then it's not going to stick. Okay, all the way down. And then we're going to look at this checked wired ribbon. Going to trim that off at 24 inches. And start considering what type of uh, bow you want to make. This is a very simple bow that I've made here. I think it looks good with the simple print from the calendar page, the artwork that we're using. So this is what I chose to use, but you put anything you want. If you like something with a little more sparkle and shine, as Miss Olivia would say, then certainly do something bigger. Go for something bigger. Get out your bow makers, make something fabulous. But for me, the simplicity of this works well with my decor. I have kind of a cottagey, rustic farmhouse decor, and this works for me. So we've layered two of the red and white checkered, and then the layered bow on top of that. 
I'm dovetailing the ends now. I'm just going to cut the polka dot bows on a slant, the tails on a slant, and then we're not going to need that chenille hanger, so we're going to clip that off too. Thank you, thank you so much to all of our patriots, to all of our people who have served in the armed forces, the military. You can't, words can't thank you enough for the sacrifices that you and your families have made, and it means so much for us to be able to celebrate the day with you and give you recognition for all the wonderful things that you've done. So God bless you and thank you for your sacrifices. All right, so now we're going to fluff our bow up a little bit. Make sure everything looks good. You can certainly make the back bow a little bigger if you'd like, or you can make it, you know, however you want to make it. So we're not going to need this wire. We're going to cut these off. I love my little pliers. It's a great tool to have. I use them almost every project. Then I'm going to pick out some florals and some greenery and stack those in there together. It makes it convenient that those can be divided and placed together like that. Or we can do it on the bottom and this is where I want mine to be. So now you have to consider that it's rather difficult to glue anything down to a piece of metal. So I'm going to use this and it's going to be just, it's just a little scrap of foam. I'm just going to put a good bit of hot glue. It's going to overlap onto the paper and onto the pan. Hopefully it will stay a little, some more, a little more securely there. I did use Gorilla Glue Stick. So, um, and by the way, this was done a while back and it's still standing. So that's a good thing. Just gonna divide the flowers up here and add my bow with a little hot glue. And then I'm gonna add some more greenery. It looked like it needed a bit more And I've added boxwood and I've added these little pieces of eucalyptus as well. We always have a celebration, or we have for several years now, at our house for the 4th of July. We have a big yard and a big piece of property where we can do fireworks and the kids can run. And it's just a lot of fun. So I love to decorate for Independence Day. Okay, so you see how I just wrap that around the pencil to make a curl in it. Kind of reminds me of fireworks so I'm putting these down in here maybe sparklers They're very festive just adding them in there and then I'm gonna add a little more red and white I want to make this a little bit bulkier without adding any more greenery so I'm just gonna cut about six inches here of a couple of pieces of this and fold it over and give it a little dovetail So speaking of things I'm thankful for, I am so very thankful that everyone's health seems to getting, be getting back to normal, that families are able to meet up now, um, doors are starting to open for families, and that, you know, I'll be able to see my family this year. It's very exciting to be able to do that and, and give all those hugs that we've missed at the last couple of celebrations. It's good to be getting back on track, I think. I pray that that's what's happening. So we're going to wrap these little pieces of pipe cleaner scraps around the tails in the center and just press those down into that foam. Now I'm going to give you two options for a hanger for this pan. You can use a piece of wide ribbon and just roll it in, just like so. Just double it over. This is very easy. Um, don't worry, I'm not squishing my flowers. They're hanging off the edge of the table. You just add a good bit of that good glue, a little more glue, a little scrap, and trim it up. And this would be a very simple way to do it if you want to do it this way. However, if you have beads, like I do, you can certainly step it up just a little bit. So I'm going to start by taking just a length of jute, whatever, I think I probably have maybe 14 inches or so, and I'm going to do a double knot. I'm tying the knot on top of itself to make sure that it doesn't slip out of the beads. 
and I'm just going to feed that bead down. Now you see the trouble I'm having there getting the bead on? Same here. Now let me show you what you can do to make that stop happening. So you add a little bit of hot glue on the end and you twist it in the way that it's already twisted. Just go with it. Protect your fingers. Cut off any little extra. And then now you have a little needle, essentially, that will go right through every bead. It will make it short work. Very easy project to do this way. I've heard others say you could use a tape or a certain type of a needle, but this works for me because it's convenient and it's right there where I'm at. Now, see, I did skip my pattern, but I fixed it. Don't worry. I discovered the problem. Same thing on this end, we're just going to double that knot up on itself. See, I haven't fixed it yet, but it, it will be fixed. I did discover it a little bit late, but I got it. A little bit of glue over the ends here, and then you can trim off whatever is left. And here you go. Thank you so much for watching. See the links below. And I'll see you again really soon. Bye. Project number one, we're gonna make some greater towel hangers. I got those from the thrift store. And my greenery came from Dirt Cheap. It was from the Target Dollar Spot, I believe, before. I have some thrifted picks. I don't, do not know what this stuff is called, but you can use moss or whatever for the bottom. I'm gonna use, gonna look at a bunch of different types of ribbon to decide which one we're gonna use. Wasn't sure in the beginning. So I've got a variety here. Some are from Dollar Tree, some are thick thrifted, some are from Big Lots. So these have been used before for another project. And I'm just showing you that we use the little sandwich ties to make a hanger on the back. There's some green foam in here. It's the floral foam. I'm just gonna press it down a little bit so I can sit this straw-like stuff on top. It's thicker than straw. It's more like wood shavings almost. But it makes a good base for this, I think, and it covers up that green pretty well. And you can see it through the grater, the green foam, but you won't be able to see it when the project is done. So don't worry about that. We're going to cover it. So when it's pressed down like this, you don't have to worry about gluing it unless you just want to. Uh, it's going to be inside, so no major wind or anything on it. And when you put your floral picks down and your greenery, it's going to hold it in place. So I'm just going to start with my longest piece of greenery and put that right in the center. And then because I have four of these, I want to use two of the floral picks in each one. And I'm very simply just going to put them on one on each side. And then I'm just going to start placing around this eucalyptus. Red, white, and blue is a great way to decorate for the summer and for patriotic occasions. And um, I just prefer the blue a little bit better. So I'm going to just do red, white, and blue with just touches of red and a little more white and blue. It's just my preference, but you can use whatever you like. This is a really good way to use up any scraps you happen to have left around, any little pieces and bits of greenery and folks that you have. So you won't need anything to be fancy on the back because it's going to be against the wall the way we style it, the way we hang it. So I'm going to show you the different options and let you decide, you know, what you think would be best for your project. You don't have to have wired ribbon. Then you can see the difference between a thin one and a thicker one. And so I have decided that I want to use this one, and this is thrifted. I'm just going to wrap it around the top. And then we're going to glue it on the back. So I'm going to make sure that I'm covering up the bottom of my hanger 
and that it's all the way up to the lip of the grater. Just to give it a little nicer finish, you can fold it over, just like that. And then glue gun, a glue gun with some hot glue is all it really takes to hold this in place. Now because this is a, um, it gets, the shape of the grater gets smaller toward what we're going to call the bottom and it's larger where the ribbon is, you're going to need to kind of pull the ribbon so that it sits flush against the, the grater. And just making a simple bow to go on here as well. These would be really pretty with, if you didn't have white, which these were white when I got them, but if you didn't have white and you had an old rusty metal one, that would be a really pretty rustic look. I'm just going to use a smaller piece of this checked ribbon to tie around the center and secure that bow in place instead of using burlap or something. That way we won't need to cover it up with anything and it'll still look nice and coordinated. Then once the bow is how you would like it, you can go ahead and glue it down, or you can trim it up first and then glue it down. Whatever is the easiest for you. I've kind of put it right at the top and at the base of that lip, and I'm just going to dovetail the ends of my ribbon. Gives it a nice little crisp, pretty country look. This is a wired ribbon, by the way, if I didn't mention that already. You can use another type, but you might have a more of a floppy bow, and that would be absolutely fine if that's the look that you like. Okay, so everything we did on the first one, we are gonna do on the second one, and I am just making this in reverse. I'm gonna make the bow first. Thank you, thank you to everyone who has already subscribed to the channel. It means more than I can say to you. I am a trained nurse, but it is my desire and my goal to be able to stay at home with my kids and take care of my husband and my family while still having a source of income to contribute to our family. And I can do that by sharing what I have learned and sharing inspiration here on YouTube. It's a wonderful platform for all kinds of people to express themselves. And I'm so happy that you are enjoying how I express myself. So you're very welcomed here. All right, so bow on the top. And now we've got that in place. Gonna make him look pretty too. Fluff it out. You can always put a button or something pretty in the center if you would like. This is how they're going to look when you hang them. Do you like them? If you do, please give me a big thumbs up. I'm going to show you a plaid and a striped towel just to show you. I've added a little more red there. Project number two, we're going to make a gnome planter. I'm going to use some thrifted picks. These are all from Goodwill. And then I have two of these floral stems and they are Black Eyed Susans and they came from Dollar Tree. I have a foam floral block. I have a bag that came from, it came from Dirt Cheap, but it was originally from Target Dollar Spot. It's kind of like a paper sack, but it's a little sturdier than that. I really don't know the fabric. Then we're gonna take some ribbon, whatever you like. Mine came from Dollar Tree, and this adorable little garden stake with a gnome on it. They have a variety, if you can find them at your store. These are some window clings that also came from Dollar Tree. I was tickled to find these. They're gorgeous. I can make a lot of projects from this one sheet. Very nice. Easy first step. We're just going to put that block right down in that bag. You can use paper bag if you would like, or those uh, paper sandwich bags. I'm going to give it a little weight by adding two rocks that stay here in my house all the time. And I'm going to remove all of my paper tags and that sort of thing. And take it off those stems 
and then you're gonna push up all of your greenery and start cutting those off. Some people like to leave them on. Uh, it's my preference to take them off because I think it gives them a more natural look. I'm gonna start with my biggest piece of fern and put that right in the back. You can take your plastic off if you want, but just be aware that this will shed a lot so I decided to leave mine on. Just in case it gets knocked over, I won't have that green messy dust all over the place. So I have a triangle shape here, the biggest one in the back, two smaller ones in the front in the corners. And then I'm gonna just start with my flowers. I'm gonna put a long one right down in the center. And then I'm just going to start adding them here and there and twisting them on their stem so that their little heads face outward and they're all looking outward. Just keep pressing those in. This is a very simple arrangement that anybody can do with no type of difficulty. It really is probably one of the simplest arrangements I've ever done. Cut down your stems if you need to. It's very easy to use your wire cutters and just clip those down. I believe you can get wire cutters from Dollar Tree, but I had mine already from the thrift store, of course. Then you're gonna make sure that as you're putting these in that you're turning it all around and looking at all angles to see if you have any spots that need a little extra something because you don't want them overlapping. You want them to look like they all are getting their share of the sunshine. So I'm gonna take these little wispy picks and just add those in. I think I have three of them. No, I have four of them. So I'm just kind of going to each corner and pushing those in and a little bit slanted outwards. This to me gives it a more of a cottagey feel, a more of a wild look, and I like this look. But you could always leave those out if you don't have them. And you can also get the little fern picks, um, something similar to this at Dollar Tree, I believe. Mine may be a little bit smaller. So I took the garden gnome off of the stake. I could have left him on there and just cut the stake down, but I didn't want to dull down my wire cutters. It's a very thick piece of metal, so I just decided to use to just replace it, it was very easy to pop off. So I'm just using a little thin wooden stick here. And I'm gonna put glue on it and then cover it with just a little scrap piece that I have here. I'm gonna fold that up. And you can see here that he has some little white spots where it's not completely covered. You know when you get things from Dollar Tree, sometimes it's not evenly colored or it's off-centered or whatever. You can work with that. And this is just a black furniture marker that I'm using. Once he's dry, you're gonna find the placement. And I'm gonna stick him down in here, slightly off center, because I have something else I wanna add. And you'll see that in a bit. Now I'm going to take these pieces of my scraps. I'm just gonna cut four pieces, and these are about eight inches long. I'm gonna fold them in half. and then you're going to dovetail these. This is wired ribbon, and that's important for this part of the project because you need something that is going to hold its shape. If you don't have wired ribbon or a very stiff ribbon, it won't hold its shape, and you need it to do so for this part. So I'm sorry I'm out of, out of um, sight there, but you get the idea. Everybody knows how to dovetail, right? Okay, so we're gonna fold the pretty sides together. I'm just gonna pinch it in the middle wrap a little bit of floral wire around it. Then I'm gonna add a little wooden stake and wrap it all around the wooden stake and add a little hot glue. We're gonna do that to four of these, all four. That's to keep it from sliding up and down as you're putting it inside the arrangement. Be sure you let that glue chill before you start putting it in the arrangement. And then I'm just gonna put these in here, here and there where I think they look pretty. I'm gonna space them out and then fluff them out just a little. This is just me adding a little more red to it. Like I said before, I prefer the blues and the whites, but you gotta have that pop of red. You gotta have it. So that's what that part looks like. So now we're gonna put one more thing in there. I'm just using a scrap piece of wood, and I'm not even sure where it came from. It's a very thin piece of laminate. And I'm using one of these 
You can easily trim these down if they don't fit. I'm going to take some of this chalk paint and I'm going to take a little brush from Dollar Tree. I'm going to bounce off most of that paint and then I'm just going to start distressing this. I'm just going to go over the edges and then swipe it back and forth so that it looks like it's got a little bit of age to it. We all know how to do this, but just in case you're new and you don't know, this is all you have to do and it's very simple. You're not looking for full coverage, you're just looking for a memory of the paint, if you will. So now I've got a glue stick here, and once the paint is dry, you can use this glue stick, or whatever glue stick you have. You can use Dollar Tree, certainly I've used it for plenty of projects. You're gonna put a layer down there, and then you can stick that one to clean down there, and it's going to stay on there for you for quite some time. Now I'm holding it as I am rubbing the bubbles out and pressing it down because I don't want it to slide all over the place and it they will have a tendency to slide if you don't try to hold them down while you're doing that. So I'm going to flip it over on the back and give it a stand. Well I'm going to give it a stake. Let's put it that way. So I'm just using another one of those wooden picks and a scrap of paper. You can see where I just cut it off of that cardboard backing. And I'm just going to press that into the glue. Then I'm going to take one of my furniture markers. This is a furniture repair marker. And I'm going to color this so that it blends in a little bit better with the background. I'm going to flip it over take a little bit of Mod Podge, and I've chosen to use a matte Mod Podge, and you're just going to go all the way from your edges, across your little plastic piece there, on your words, and then down the sides. This is going to hold everything together. It's going to look uniform with the finish when it's done. And that sign should last you a very long time. So here it is all dried, and in the floral arrangement. What do you think about it? Isn't it cute? I think he turned out very nice and he is going to fit very well into my party time and my 4th of July decor when we have our 4th of July get-togethers. Be sure you guys follow me on social media. I have Pinterest and Instagram. What do you think about this one? What do you like better? Do you like the kitchen project or do you like the porch project? I think they're both super cute. Practical, simple enough to do, and they make a nice, colorful, patriotic impact. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye. All right, we're gonna start with a variety of ribbons. Some are from Dollar Tree, some are thrifted. And Dollar Tree has a variety of window clings, so you just choose the ones that you like. I'm going to be using this one for mine. This is one of those, I think originally one of those Valentine signs from Dollar Tree, but somebody else DIY'd it. I got it from the thrift store, and yeah, I'm going to DIY it again, so we're really stretching our book here. Just going to use my metal ruler from Dollar Tree to gently tear or pull away the borders or frame for this piece of art. And then when I did so, I was very happy to see that most of the paper comes off as well. I'm going to just take my foam sanding block. I'll go around all the edges to make sure that I've gotten the glue off and that I've gotten off the pieces of paper that are left. And pretty much you can peel that glue off of the back by hand if you'd like. I'm going to take a scrap piece of poster board and trace around my backing here with a pencil and then I'm just going to cut that out. I'm going to use some Elmer's Craft Bond spray glue. And I'm going to put that on. Love this stuff. Just started using it. I found it at the thrift store. Just going to press that down. Be sure you clean your table up afterwards. I should have put something under there to protect it because it made kind of a sticky mess. But I cleaned it up with some alcohol and a rag. Okay, so I'm just going to use my wood ruler to help make sure I got that nice and flat. Then I'm going to peel off this larger cling. And we're going to put this in the middle of this sign using some Elmer's washable glue. 
This is a purple glue stick that turns clear when it dries, which makes it great to be sure that you can see where you put it so you don't have any issues later with any edges or sides or, you know, parts that are trying to peel away. So I'm making kind of a mess, but you won't see it at all once it's dry. I'm going to just kind of eyeball the center of it here. And then, believe it or not, I found some Cricut tools or some Silhouette or whichever one tools from the thrift store. Didn't find the machine, unfortunately, but I'm just going to use that to flatten it out and make it nice and secure. And then I'm going to take some of the stars that are on that, that come with that pack. And I'm just going to place those down too. Just going to rub a little bit of glue on there and then just place them down wherever I feel like I want to put them. You can make a border or however you want to do yours. Now to just turn those edges under, I'm using a, again, with a sanding block. And I'm just going to go over the edges down and away. It's not necessarily trimming it off, but it is making it nice and flat and smooth around the edges. And that's kind of what I was going for. Now, you can use these furniture repair markers if you have any issues with your borders on here. See, they're camouflage. So it was a little peeled up spot there. And I just went ahead and fixed it. Now you can't see it. So we're gonna put the glue down and put these back on. Start with the bottom, go to the side, and then work yourself away around that way so that you make sure that it is nice and as square as possible by eyeballing it. All right, and then this is the last piece. And I do have a little, you can see a little bit of the white up there on the top, but it doesn't matter because I'm gonna make a frame for this with this rope that came from Dollar Tree. So, so far we're using mainly Dollar Tree items. Now, this is how you're gonna keep that rope from fraying out. I don't like the plastic edge that's on there, that little piece of tape. So you just take your glue, you press it down on the inside and a little on the outside and your finger protectors, protectors and just twist around and that'll keep it in place. So I have this elevated off my table just a little. That's how I started it to try to put my rope down and then it occurred to me it might be not level or even. So I just took my metal ruler and put it under there to put the glue on so that it will be flat and it won't stick to my table if any glue bleeds under. But I try to keep my glue like toward the top surface so that it doesn't drip off the bag. So that's what I'm doing here, just going along my edge. And you can clamp your corners so that it, they stay nice and tight and square instead of rounding or pulling away. And then when you get all the way around to where you started, put some glue on the bottom there I'm going to try to make this rope look as nice as possible. And I'm going to use my clippers because these are better for this thick rope. I'm going to put some glue down in there and then smooth it over with my silicone fingertip. And it makes a nice clean edge. See the edge? Pretty good. So now I'm going to take 18 inches of this first red ribbon that is solid. It's a wired ribbon. All of these are wired, by the way. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blue and the same thing with the polka dot burlap. And I'm just gonna make a pretty easy bow here. You just twist it over like this. Well, you have some ends and then pinch it up in the center of that loop. Very easy. I like the look of that bow for this project. I considered other things, but I like the look of this. I'm gonna do the same thing with the red. You can see how it's just pinched up in the middle. Then I'm using my clamp to hold it. And these little clamps with the pink rubber tips, they do come from Dollar Tree. I love these. Love them, love them. I use them all the time. And I have a bigger set too that comes in a set of two. I'm going to do the same thing with the little burlap. Then I'm going to add that one on the top. And a little scrap piece of a pipe cleaner here around the middle to squeeze it up and twist it around. I am going to just bevel the edges. I'm not going to do any anything fancy. I'm not going to do the dovetail on this one. You can do it however you like, but I'm going to cut these tails pretty short. 
I want this to be a compact little bow. Then I'm going to fold the burlap in half, wrap it around the center, and then trim off that extra piece of wire back there because we do not need that to attach it to anything. A lot of times I'm not sure where I'm going with the project until I get going and then I kind of get in the flow and then I change things up. So I apologize if that's confusing to anyone. But you know you got to kind of go with you got to kind of go with your gut. Okay. So now I'm just going to trim off the bulk in the back and decide do I want it in the center or do I want it on the side? I think I'm going to put it in the side. Almost always my bows go over there in the left top side. I just use a clamp also from Dollar Tree to hold that down. And then some of this pit berry that also came from Dollar Tree. I believe it was around Christmas or during fall time. And I'm gonna cut three pieces of this that are, they're about hmm, six inches long probably. I don't recall that I measured those. It doesn't look like I did. You can easily curl these by wrapping it around a pencil. The more you wrap it, the tighter your little spiral is going to be. So I'm just gonna make a few of these. And then since they look like little fireworks or little sparklers, I think they're great for this project. I'm gonna put a little hot glue here and tuck it underneath the bow on the side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, kind of trailing downward. And then since our glue should be dry at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add one at the top. And fix the bow, make them pretty. And see, it's a really tight little bow so it doesn't obstruct our, our country there in the middle of the decor piece. Now I'm gonna put one little swirl there on the bottom and then I'm gonna make a different type of bow in this corner. You can do the same thing that I'm doing or whatever, you can leave it empty in that corner if you want, but I just felt like it needed a little something else over here in the corner. So in the burlap ribbon this time, I've trimmed off the wire edges and I'm just pulling free some of the fibers from that ribbon. Very easy to do, just take your fingernail and just start pulling away at the parts that are sticking out. See there? You're gonna have to start with the one that's off toward the outside and then work your way inward. And I'm just trimming that up a little bit. And then I've got some wire jute that I'm using to cinch the middle of this one. I'm going to trim it off. Again, we don't need it for anything. We're going to get it off of there. And then I'm just going to cover it up with the polka dot just to keep the colors consistent from the other bow into this bow. A little hot glue will hold it together. We're going to trim up, of course, anything extra that we don't need. And then glue that down. Now this is my jar of scraps. This is a jute jar or a thread jar. I'm going to make a very simple little tie for the back to hang it. So this is all you have to do. Fold it in half, tie a little knot in the end. See the little ends right there? and then slide it down and pull it tight. Now you have a hanger. Just gonna put a little hot glue and a little piece of scrap paper on the back and it's nice and neat. Anytime you're moving your project around, if you turn it over, be sure you turn it back and fluff it back out. Fix it how you want it. So what do you think about the first sign? Not bad, huh? Considering that's a window cling, some thrifted pieces, and some Dollar Tree pieces, I think this, I think this is a great look. Very pretty sign. Be sure you're following me on my social media. I have Pinterest and Instagram. Love to see you there. Project number two, the USA tag sign. So you can see that I'm going to be using some spray paint in this project. I've got some 
pieces of fabric. I have this decor USA piece that came from Dollar Tree. My fabric was thrifted, by the way. This is the thrifted piece. It's a puzzle backing, which makes great signs if you haven't tried it. And this is a Dollar Tree tag sign that I've had for a while and I've used it before. I'm going to use this, just a little piece of sandpaper. Also, I got this in a pack of Dollar Tree. You see my theme here with the Dollar Tree things, right? All right, so I'm gonna gently pull this off because I wanna keep this piece of burlap cord. I can use this for a bow later if I want to. With scraps, I think that it's important to hang on to them. You never know what you might can use again. So I was very happy to find on inspection of these glittery letters that they really have sort of a paper backing and rather than spending my time sanding them to try to get that off and making that mess and inhaling all that stuff, I can just easily peel that off. And there's something quite satisfying about doing that too. Especially when it comes off in a big chunk. See how easy that is? I mean, it took very little time to do this. So you're gonna do this to each one of your letters because flipping them around won't work. It won't work because the letters won't match correctly. So then there's just a little bit of stuff still left on there. You can peel further down if you'd like, but for me, I thought it, that the texture of this would hang onto that paint a little bit better. So I went ahead and sanded down all the edges because they weren't really sanded. They didn't have a nice edge, they were just you know, you know, it's a Dollar Tree item, and I wanted mine to look a little better. So I'll take them outside and spray them down with two coats of that matte. I'm gonna do the same thing to the sign. Now, what are we gonna do with this and this? We're gonna put it on our sign. It was painted also, but really with the natural texture, it was so light, it wasn't necessary for me to do that, but I did it anyway. So I'm just going to trim this down and we're going to wrap it around this little puzzle sign. Very easy to do. Just going to run a bead of glue. Be sure you don't take too much time though after you lay your bead of glue because it will start to dry and then you're just gonna have to add more glue and we don't wanna waste, right? The corners are easy enough to do. Turn it under like this add a little bit of glue, and then fold it up. And then you have a nice, neat corner. And don't worry about all the excess, because you're gonna trim that off. I just wanted to make sure that I had plenty to make my line straight, and when I pull it, I'm lining it up with the natural stripes on the fabric, and that helps me keep it fairly straight. And that's important when I start doing other parts of the project, that those lines are pretty straight, that my pattern is pretty straight. So my tag is dry. I did go ahead with the letters and that white tag and put one coat of linen white chalk paint. I didn't add that in there, but I did do that just to really make a good solid color. Do you see here how we're doing this ribbon or this piece, this four inch piece of fabric? I learned that from some of my YouTube friends, Crafty Cousins. Okay, so we've cut this piece and I'm just gonna pull this loose because I want the frayed look on both ends. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I'm gonna take a little snip, pull it, grab one of the threads, and when I pull it down, it's gonna leave a line for me, a gap in that fabric to cut right along there so I've got a nice, clean, finished edge. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. I'm gonna grab a couple of threads and pull those out. And this is going to look a little bit like a sash across there. So now I'm going back over those letters and I'm going to go around all of the edges that I can reach with a sanding block to rough it up and then what I can't get with a sanding block I'm going to use a folded piece of sanding paper and the grid on that sanding paper is um, has more of a bite so where you use that paper you're going to have a more distressed look and you'll probably see that in here. 
And now I like that brown showing through the original color of the sign. I like the look of that. So here we go. And you see how you can just put that in, wrap it around your finger, and get inside of those little crannies that you can't reach with that block. You can also use a nail file. Okay, so once all that's done and you've dusted them off a little bit, we're going to start placing them down on this piece. Decide where we want them. And this is what makes that pattern being straight, or fairly straight, convenient, because I can line my letters up going by that. Now I'm going to have my S overlapping slightly the U and the A. I'm going to need to raise that up and I'm going to use some of the scrap foam board. I'm just going to add those down in areas where they're not touching the other two letters but where it is touching the background underneath. Okay. So we have not glued down that red to that plaid fabric yet, and it doesn't matter, because, or the check fabric, because this is the letter here is going to glue it down. It's going to be sandwiched in between. So I'm going to line it up, decide where I want that, and then I'm going to press it down. And I'll do the same thing with the A. I'm looking at the line there, trying to see where it is, and get it fairly straight. And then I will know where to put the S. I'm adding my glue on the raised areas because that's what's going to be touching. And I'm going to press that down. I did set a paint can over the top of that to make sure that everything stayed in place. For our embellishments, I'm going to use some of these bicycle spoke charms. I got those at Dirt Cheap. And I'm just going to use my bullnose pliers to cut those off. You can use um, like a nail remover type thing too if you'd like. That way they'll lay nice and flat. I've used my ruler to go across the section of the top here so I will know how I want to space out my stars. And there's only blue and white in here which works great because my background, I mean <laughs> there's blue and red, my background is white. So it worked out nicely I think. When I got these, I think I got them 95% off last year. So I, play, I paid just a few cents for these. And I knew that they would come in handy for something and they were perfect for this project. I just knew this was the project. So now I'm gonna add some to the letters. I'm gonna do a blue and then a red on the S and then another blue on the U. I've just kind of put them there randomly, but you know, going at an angle, making sure all my little points are going up just because I don't claim to have OCD, but I do like things to be fairly symmetrical. Now I'm going to put a big dollop of glue in each corner and then across the high sections of this. I'm going to turn this and get a good look from above, try to get this as evenly spaced and level as possible. I want it to stay down on that well so I'm using these big clips to hold this in place and then there are my other clamps on the other side that I mentioned earlier I think I mentioned them okay now we are going to make an extra little something for this and I bet you know already what I am making yes we're making a tassel I'm going to just cut a little snip and then I'm going to rip it away. I want it to be rustic and worn looking and so ripping it instead of cutting it is going to give it that little rough edge that is going to make this project just really come together. I'm going to do the same thing with the blue that we used in the background. Just tearing them and some of them are longer than the other ones which is not a problem because we are going to cut those in half and they're going to be perfect. So you just fold them and cut them. Then there's our pile. I'm gonna gather up the pile there, kind of mix them up so you don't have too many of one color together. Of course, it doesn't matter once you get it bunched in your hand, and you could certainly use all of the same color if you want. Now I'm taking some red twine, and I'm going to tie this right in the middle. I'm gonna give it a couple of knots to make sure it doesn't come undone. 
This is so simple. Clipping off the extra, could be tucked in, but I went ahead and clipped it. And I'm just gonna pull all those down. I wanna leave a length of cord there because I'm gonna use that to hang it. And then I'm gonna start a new piece of that jute and tie a knot about an inch down from the top. This is going to hold all of that fabric into a tassel form. As you see, it's already starting to look like a tassel, right? A couple of knots to hold it down, to hold it together so it doesn't come undone because I'm gonna be pulling on it a little bit when I trim it up. So you're just gonna twist, 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 twist around there till you get that as thick as you want it. I just kind of eyeballed it to what looked right. When you trim it, you can tuck it in. There's another one of those Cricut tools that I got at the thrift store. You just add a little glue, take that tail, and then press it underneath where you wound it, and it will stay perfectly. Then I'm going to trim off any extra threads that are hanging off. Then I'm going to start trimming off at an angle, some of them at an angle, but not in any particular order to make this little tassel. Now attach, we're going to attach this by just putting it through that hole there, pulling it up, and then we're going to lace it back and forth through that hole. Simple. You can put some tape on here if you need help, but it, the hole was big enough on the tag sign for it to go through pretty easily. You can see there it's pretty much will thread itself through there. It didn't take a lot of effort. I'm just taking the little spaces out so that it looks nice and solid. I'm gonna flip it over in the back, glue it, and trim it. Isn't that cute? Now I'm going to just add a little bit of glue there so that it stays in place when I hang it up. We need a hanger, so I'm just gonna use another piece of that, the fabric that we pulled off, and that's gonna be our hanger for this one. Simple. To cover up the back and make it nice and neat, you can just put this down on some crafting paper, trim it up, fold it over, hot glue it down. Simple, simple. All right, so what do you think about this one? Which one is your favorite? Do you like the, the one we use the clings on or do you like this layered tag? Thank you so much to all of my subscribers. I am so happy to say that I am at 900 subscribers now. It's fluctuating back and forth a little bit, but hey, I'm closer to my goal of 1,000 and that's wonderful and it makes my heart very happy. As always, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye! You can subscribe or click one of these two links for more. Thanks!